Hey everybody, Wipo Knives here. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a question first before we start this tutorial. Uh, which do you prefer? The horizontal grind lines uh, that get put into the knife, like so, or a hand rubbed finish? Um, I, I've had some mixed results so far. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of a poll on Instagram, but uh, if you go ahead and leave a comment down below saying which you which side you prefer, uh, the left side, which is the hand finished, or the right side, which has the horizontal grind lines in them. Uh, tell me what you guys think, and uh, we'll get started with the tutorial of showing you how to take this and turn it to that. All right, let's get started. First off, I want to say that hand sanding takes a lot longer uh, than doing just the regular horizontal grind lines, you know, just fresh off your grinder. So if you want to do this, you got to think about if you want to increase the price on your knives um, or if you can maintain it the same and, you know, live with that. But uh, typically, I mean, it takes quite a long time and I'll take you through the whole process of how I do it. Um, but it, it, it is a lengthy process. So uh, just to get started here, this is what I use. It's just a piece of micarta, old piece. And uh, I like to have something with a sharp edge right here. And um, what I kind of do is I'll take some sandpaper and um, I'll loop it around here just like that. So now you have a sharp edge to run into your uh, plunge lines. So that's why I like to have that, keep that sharp edge right there. Um, if you get it too rounded, like let's say you're going to go and use this little, uh, this is like a fairing strip block. I use, use that to clamp up my knives, but um, say you use, use that over a sharp edge. Um, sometimes you'll slip and you'll go up onto your ricasso and you don't want that. So you just want to stay on your, um, bevel line just, uh, off that ricasso. So I use that and I guess sometimes you might want to put a little padding on there. Uh, I, this is actually working pretty well so far. Um... Some guys will put a like gasket liner and they'll put it on here and it just kind of makes everything smooth out a little bit nicer. But I've have I've been having pretty good results with just using a regular piece of micarta. Another little tip before you start doing this, if you're on concrete, put something down. <laughs> if you got any sort of mat, foam padding or anything, go ahead and use it. I just stand on a uh, block of wood or some, some blocks of wood here. And you wouldn't believe how, how much that makes a difference on your feet. Um, like I said, you know, hand sanding, hand sanding is not a slow, or it's, it's not a really quick process. So you're going to be standing here for a while. And if you are, you might as well be comfortable. You want to clamp up your knife in the vise. Now i got to readjust this just a hair. Make sure it's in there good and tight. And also let me say, you should really normally do all your hand sanding before you get your handle on. Uh, this is kind of a last minute decision that I decided to make, so I'm just doing it with the handle on. Uh, you just gotta kind of remain careful, especially if you have some wood handles. Uh, you don't want to ding this stuff up, but I mean, this is some pretty tough G10. And, I mean, it's really not going to make too much of a difference. What I like to do is, um, whatever grit that you end with on your grinder. So, this was ended with a, I believe, 110. And it was a, a bit of a worn out 110. Um, so, to go to hand sanding, to get this horizontal out, I'll go... Let me just scoot you around here. I'll go take a sheet like this. This is just emery. Uh, aluminum oxide 
um, and that's 80 grit. So I, I basically went from 110 down to 180, just a step down. And uh, as standard sheets, I just like to rip these in half. Let me go lengthwise. And that's what's nice about these, is that you can rip them like that. With the uh, regular sand, uh, regular sandpaper, the paper kind, that doesn't have this nice backing, uh, you end up getting stuff to tear. Let me show you an example here. Here's a piece. Okay, see, so yeah, I have some 150 grit, and I have some 200 that's paper, and you get a lot of tear out like this. It's just kind of annoying, but if you get this emery stuff, uh, or with that cloth backing, it makes it a lot, a lot easier to tear and uh, make it manageable. So now I will go ahead and take this and split this in half further. So you basically split everything in the quarters on those sheets. And then once you have it split, you're just going to wrap this around. Just put it on your micarta block or what, whatever you got and just wrap it around here and now you have a sanding block and I just hold both sides and I'll just go like this over the blade and uh, move it accordingly when one spot ran runs out okay so see there you can see the uh, horizontal lines in there and I'm just gonna do a quick touch up on there and I'll show you what it looks like after a couple passes one thing that I like to use is more of this handy stuff. I've talked about it before. I love this stuff. Just three in one oil, you know, it's simple, whatever. Uh, but I like to put a little line like that on there. And I'll take this 80 grit sandpaper and just start going over the whole thing. And it's important not to rock it back and forth because you don't want to hit up here. Uh, some of this scale will actually get taken off because we're taking off some more layer of metal. So, let me just show you here. So I'm getting a half done. Okay, so that's not very much. It takes a lot longer than this, but I just want to show you the lines that are getting put in here. So, clean that off. Okay, so now you have the vertical lines along with horizontal lines. Um, so the objective is to get out all the horizontal lines. And that's why we go with a higher or a lower grit to start. Something a lot more coarse. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on this for a little bit and uh, give you an idea what that's all about. This um, right up here on your plunge line, you will have, that's probably the hardest part is the plunge line and right down here is the hardest part of doing the knife uh, hand sanding at least um, because you have like this little gap that just doesn't you can't sand past it so you gotta like sand up to it and sometimes you can tilt your block up and sand that little part right in there and it gets it really nice so I mean you're gonna have to use a couple extra pieces just for that part alone but uh, it's worth it. So uh, I'm just going to keep going going ahead and uh, hand sanding it. Don't forget your oil. Keep more oil on it. And the, the oil acts as uh, a carry for all the extra debris. Uh, all the little metal shavings that are there get pulled away from your sandpaper. And that way it will not clog up and uh, wear out faster. So I, I like to use the oil. And uh, by the way, when you're doing this, little rock and roll never hurt anyone either. Obviously I don't have any on because of the video. Um, also a thing to note, right now we're just trying to get the bulk of the lines out and everything, but, uh, when you get towards the higher finishes, uh, and I'll show you later, but you're gonna want to make smooth, even path over the whole blade, and, uh, otherwise you get, like, these little squiggly 
little line marks in there and you don't want that you want a nice even finish over the whole blade and uh, it looks a lot better I don't I don't like the little squigglies that appear um, to me it, it seems like it's unfinished so um, I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'll stage up to the higher grit okay guys uh, I've been working on this for uh, just about like five minutes now um, if that but you can see we're getting somewhere Okay, see all those uh, horizontal lines are becoming more apparent and uh, we are not out of the water yet. There's lots more work to do. When you come to the point where you no longer need a piece, you just kind of uh, unwrap this here and uh, just tear it off. That's what makes it nice about this stuff is that you, know, you can have a lot more... Um, control of the sandpaper um, with that with the cloth backing so the normal paper stuff doesn't work near as well but after you do that then you have a new piece so I'm just gonna keep on working don't be afraid to use uh, some sandpaper uh, don't overuse <laughs> one piece because you'll be here all day if you do um, hand rub finish takes some time it, it costs a little bit more to do but uh, ultimately, the customers are going to be willing to pay more for a uh, just a more finished blade. And I, that seems to be the tendency that I've ran into or experienced so far. So, I mean, that's just a thought. Uh, you might have a different experience, but that's what I've been seeing. And uh, it seems to be like a pretty cool process that people like. So, that's what I'm going to start doing now. And you can hear it clicking. The tap, 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 tap. It's hitting that ricasso. It's not going over, bumping over. And that would happen if you had a rounded corner on there. Um, you don't want that. You want it to hit up right just on that bevel. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this and uh, come back in a little bit. I just want to point out another quick tip here. Uh, if you're ripping this stuff, when you're ripping it in strands, uh, be careful about ripping it up or, I mean, any any way at all. Because when you rip it, grit goes flying and it can actually fling right into your eye. So, I mean, if you're doing that, either wear some safety glasses or, uh, for instance, I don't have any on right now. So I just shut my eyes whenever I rip this. Um, it can fly up into your face and it can hurt pretty bad if you get one of these little um, little specks into your eye. So... You definitely don't want that, so be safe. Okay, the main bevel still needs some work, but uh, I also want to show you if you have a harpoon style knife, just like this, or as any form of a back swedge or edge or anything, um, it's it's basically the same process except you angle it. You angle your uh, micarta and sandpaper just a little bit. That way you don't come up here on this edge and everything. And um, once you, you'll, you'll feel it. It's a lot smaller of an edge. So you got to be careful not to wiggle it too much. But just keep it flat on there and just keep going in a straight path and you'll be fine. I'm going to go on there and kind of try to find the levelness of it. If that's a word. <laughs> um, just, just try to find where it's flat and then just go along it. And uh, don't forget your oil. The uh, race clip portion takes considerably less time than the bevel. Uh, when you're doing a big area like this, it, it takes some time. So I mean, don't get don't get discouraged. You'll get there. It's it's just a lengthy process. Um, usually. Uh, I don't I, I haven't really been doing it too long so I can't really tell you how fast I can do it and I, I'm sure I'll learn a couple of tricks uh, I might re-upload a video after I've been pretty experienced with doing this but uh, really I, I've done two hand sanded finishes before today and uh, but they're coming out great so um, I figured I'd just share the information so uh, when you got a big area like this on here it, it does take some time 
and you get really got to get those initial grind marks out that are horizontal. And this, you'll spend the most time on this grit, which which is the lower grit because it's the hardest to get out all those lines. And it really depends on how well you are grinding your bevels. If you have a lot of dips and wavy lines in there, um, it's going to be a lot more work for you to do on the hand sanding. So if you use a bevel jig or anything like that to keep everything straight, you're going to want to do that. Um, you'll get a lot better results hand sanding if you work on your initial grinds. I'm just going to go ahead and start working on this a little bit more. Um, maybe 5 to 10 more minutes of hand sanding on that part and it'll be done. Uh, and then I'll stage up to the next grit. Alright, I've done a bit more sanding and when you think you got it, I know this isn't here yet, but I want to just show you the uh, last grind lines before I finish. Um, just take kind of a cloth and wipe this down and I'll show you here after you wipe it all clean you're gonna hold it up into the light or something and look on there uh, from up here it, it doesn't look too bad but if you hold it in the right light and there's a lot of work still left to do as you can see those horizontal grind lines in there and they're in there pretty deep uh, you know grinder versus hand grinding it's it's gonna be a lot faster on the grinder so you gotta just give yourself that extra time and go ahead and get all all these out every single little one of those lines and you'll see that here soon just another thing worth noting here um, as you can see I only have this sandpaper wrapped around here like a couple times uh, if you get uh, and that's why I split it in half um, if you get too much sandpaper around here um, as you can see right now the corners are still pretty sharp um, but if you get too much sandpaper around there you end up back to this piece uh, which is no good and then you'll slip and go up onto your ricasso and that's not what you want but uh, just another tip for you uh, back to hand sanding I'll just kind of move it along the different paths once one part gets worn out just put an ex another thing of oil on there and just keep going Another thing, do this in the morning. It's nice and cool. You don't want to be sweating like crazy out here doing this. Uh, it's not so fun when it's blistering hot. <laughs> okay, I'm getting pretty close now. I gotta get, there's more lines right here. Uh, up here is looking pretty good. I, I tend to focus on that area a little bit more when I'm sanding because I really like to get that part by the plunge just carved out of there or sanded out of there but yeah I need to do this part more uh, you can actually see on there the uh, horizontal grind lines right there up here you can't really see it so much though so uh, let me try to block the light a little bit you can't really see it over there but now on this end you can still see them so I'm just gonna keep continuing hand sanding now, after we've uh, been sanding a little bit more, there's not really too many horizontal lines. There's a couple up top right here. Still need to come out. Um, and this is what you gotta do. You just gotta keep looking and make sure that there's nothing there. This is actually a pretty stubborn one that I'm trying to get out right now. And uh, there's more along the edge right here. So I'm just gonna keep at it and keep going and then... Uh, you gotta be stubborn, more stubborn than the grind lines. Alright guys, so we are now finally at the point where we have all the horizontal lines out of here. And, uh, let me just show you right there. There's one more right there. But that'll come out with the, the next grit. So, uh, as long as you got pretty much most of them out of there, uh, that'll be good, so... Now what we're going to do is we're going to stage our grits. So before we used an 80 grit and now we're going to go to a 120. And I got some right here. It's just more of the black stuff. It's the same, same kind of sandpaper but it's just a lighter grit. So we're going to put some more oil on here. 
and uh, go at it like we did before. Now, like I said, the majority of your hand sanding is going to be on the first grit that you use, which is going to be the coarse stuff. This is basically just refining everything that you've worked towards. Um, once you get all the lines going the same way, it's pretty easy. Everything just kind of stages up and you just keep going from there. As you can see, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm uh, kind of slowing down on the sanding because you don't want to put some really deep grooves in there after you've come this far uh, any certain way. You don't want it to slide to the side or anything like that. And I mean, right now you can even see right there, it's starting to get a pretty nice sheen to it. You can almost see my uh, hand reflection. It's nowhere near a mirror finish or anything, uh, but you know, a, a pretty nice finished look it's getting to be. So I'm gonna take a fresh piece. That was a old, or an older worn out kind of piece, but I'm gonna go up to a, uh, this is still 110 grit. I'm gonna wrap it around. And just go over this surface really good, nice and slow, with uh, some more oil. Just make sure those lines are nice and straight. I'm going to get it going just a little bit to get out the old grind lines, or the sanding lines, and then I'll kind of slow it down after that. It's starting to look pretty good. So, I mean, the objective of this and staging up in grits is you want to remove all of your 80 grit marks with the 110 grit marks, and then you'll stage up from there like maybe 220 and the objective there is to remove all your 110 marks uh, with your 220 grit. So just keep getting this going and make it nice and uniform after you get to the desired uh, level. Make sure there's no horizontal scratches, no diagonal scratches. You want them um, to be all uniform. And then we're just going to finish this uh, harpoon clip right here. And that one takes considerably less time, like I said earlier. Um, so now we're going to, uh, I just want to show you here what that did. Alright. It's, uh, there's still quite a few scratches in there, but it's more refined, um, right there on the clip as well. So, now we're going to move up to a, uh, 120, or 220, sorry, 220 grit piece of paper. And, I could get my micarta here gonna take it just like everything before and this is you know oh this is why I don't like the paper and you can cut it you can cut it with like a razor or something like that but I just kind of grabbed it and used it so all right now we're gonna put some oil on here you always keep that oil on there and you'll always be able to remove the material nice and this is where you can really really feel it drag um, because you're going up into a higher grit and uh, it won't glide near as smooth, but that's okay. You want those nice uniform scratches to go in there. When you get to this point, it starts getting, you know, considerably less time between sandings. Just get a bit of oil. Usually I don't even have to change out the paper. Um, and I'll show you real fast. You know, I said earlier about the squiggly lines that you'll get. I'll just show you real fast. See, if you get it going at it like this, you'll get squiggly lines. Um, 
rather than a long, nice, smooth line. And I'll show you. You gotta be up close though. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but there you can see one. Right there's a squiggle. Um, all throughout there, it just looks, uh, it just doesn't look consistent. So, you're gonna have to, um, I mean, it's smooth, but it, it just like leaves those little scratches in there. So, you, you really want to go the full length of that blade. Alright, so I'm gonna just kind of move this paper around a little bit. And get a nice, nice sheet going. Because this is going to be my final passes on this grit. Notice how I'm going slow, keeping it controlled. You just got to stay just like that. And now we'll show you what difference that makes. It makes everything super consistent. And you get a really nice sheen on it. See how they're much straighter now? You don't have that squiggle up in the top. Just like that. You do it nice and slow. And we're going to finish up that harpoon clip. Don't forget your oil. And do that clip just the same. Okay, so now we're gonna. Uh, that was 150, and now we can go up on to a 220 grit. Just use this more uh, paper, sandpaper, and put some more oil back on there, and. Start sanding. And then when we come to the final passes, slow down. And then do your harpoon clip. Alright, that should probably be good enough. Um, start to move pretty fast once you get get it going higher. And now we're going to go up to 400. And it's just it's just black paper. I think it, yeah, I believe it's four, 400 grit. And that's pretty high. So let's get all the excess oil and uh, grit off of there. That way we can put some new oil on and it's all clean. Go ahead right there. Now we're just going to go over this. And you can hear the difference. There's not much resistance there at all on a 400 grit. Uh, and this has actually been used over and over again. So it's pretty worn out. But it actually works pretty nicely. Uh, as long as you're staging up you'll be fine. The point is just to not take too much time per step uh, and I'll f actually finish on this grit. Make sure you got all those pieces covered because this is going to be your last one you want this one to look the nicest. Do your finish ones. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And then I'll move up here to this harpoon clip. All right. Now we got a pretty nice hand rubbed finish. And I'll show you it up close. Let me bring it out in the sun for you. Okay, out here in some natural light. Uh, that was 
Yeah, I believe that was the side that I did first, and then this was the side that I was just working on right here. And you can see it's very has a very nice sheen to it. Looks really nice, and you can go higher in the grits if you want. You know, I stopped at 400. Um, you get up in 600, you still get a really nice satin. I mean, you can go up into the thousands if you really want and get a real nice mirror polish and everything uh, and start using some rouge or whatever. Um, but at this stage, if you want to, I mean, you could, you could even go less. It, it's all up to you, whatever finish you desire. Um, but when you stop, though, you can also put your mark here or whatever, um, whatever you got to do. And uh, then it's pretty much done. Um, and like I said, you know, normally you wouldn't do this with the handle on there. Uh, normally you would uh, wait to put that on after all the hand sanding is done. So, but I mean, I made it happen and it didn't tear up the handle at all, put no scratch marks in it or nothing. And it's just fine. But that's about it guys. Um, that's pretty much all there is to hand sanding. So, uh, and again, be sure to let me know if you like the hand sanding rather than the uh, horizontal line finish. Let me know. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. And uh, that about covers it, guys. Thanks for watching.